We have a tweet from the Raymond G. Stanley Jr. It's actually a clip from Breaking Points. Raymond says scumbag CNN isn't just going after Tim Caster Crowder. They're going after all independent media, even super middle of the road breaking points with Sagar and Crystal Ball. They are canceling their planned live stream portion of the presidential debate. That is a that's a huge mistake. That's amazing. But let me play this clip for you from uh, breaking points of uh, uh, Sagar and Crystal. A little bit behind the scenes about streaming the debate. So we plan on streaming our analysis here. However, as you guys know, CNN has the quote unquote exclusive rights since they're the ones who are holding it. Now, they have given permission to every major news organization in the U.S. C-SPAN, ABC News, Fox News, except even Fox News have permission. So uh, we got a weird email today at Breaking Points from YouTube basically asking us and reminding us to confirm copyright policy. So freaking out a little bit. What's going on. I work. I get the uh, email for the head of CNN communications. Um, I'm not going to read her name here, but I'll just read you the email that we wrote her and her response. I said, hi, Sagar and Jetty here from Breaking Points, new show hosted on YouTube, etc. Reaching out on the advice of YouTube for permission to be able to stream the debate on our YouTube channel as has already been granted to other news organizations in keeping standing with the norms around presidential debates. Please advise if we have permission to stream this debate with our commentary in keeping with the fair use doctrine. Here's CNN's response. Hi, Sagar. The debate will be available on CNN's YouTube channel. We are not offering the feed for other YouTube channel channels. So that's it, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that they are giving permission to every other major news organization, they are effectively stifling all of independent media by banning our ability to stream the debate on YouTube. So look, we will do a before stream and an after stream. We'll do our best, but this is outrageous. It is a total violation of any of the norms and the spirits around presidential debates. Okay, guys, don't drop your show. They have no authority to restrict access to what is, I mean, it, it hits so many of the fair use points to do a live commentary on a presidential debate. You've got the, the, the it's transformative, clearly. You are talking over the debate, okay? If somebody wants to watch the debate clean, to watch the debate, you can't get that on one on, on the, your their stream or our stream or Crowder's stream. OK, it is clearly transformative. It is clearly educational and it is clearly commentary. It fits three of the four criteria cleanly. I'm willing to bet it hits all four, all four of them. So the idea that you that you guys would, would back up, I, I recommend you don't. Um, however, it, it is, is to be seen how YouTube will handle this. But we will be multi streaming on various platforms with the expectation that CNN will make a fraudulent attempt. Okay, well, let's put it this way. They're going to attempt to assert we don't have fair use, I'm willing to bet, and we do, because cases like this have already been battled out, and we win every time. Every time. Every channel's done this. Crowder has done this, and Crowder won. We had a stream. Fox News challenged it. We won. David Pakman, same thing. For all the criticism we give that guy, Fox News went after him. He won, because they, they cannot do that. CNN, this is big. This is big. The, the update here from Breaking Points is that CNN's giving access to all of the major networks to do this, and they're not giving any non-cable network right, the access right. to it's, it. It's a mainstream media monopoly. Yep. Right? They all pretend to hate each other, but actually they really hate independent media. And right. They, they can't because, be a part of it. Only mainstream media can. Right. Because y'all have gone around them, around them, and they can't. They can't control it, and they cannot stand that. Well, right? I mean, it's it's still about the access. I say this a lot. It's it's really about the access to the president. They're going to do whatever the administration wants because they have friends in the administration. It's essentially it's the mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. They've already made the bed like that. They've already set the entire um, the the parameters so that way Trump is going to be in as disadvantageous a disadvantage. He's going to have as many disadvantage. Yeah, thank you disadvantageous <laughs> position as as uh you, he they could possibly manage uh, it's not there it, there's not there's no argument about it it's, it, it's plain for anyone to see if you look it looks like uh Sagar is saying he, he tweeted we will be streaming for our premium members subscribers at breakingpoints.com but this is genuinely not righteous tech on independent media would be one thing to keep it just on cnn but to give to others and screw us plus all others is bs this is really fascinating because uh if if what he is saying, if if, if, if what Sagar is saying is true, or I'm, I'm interpreting this correctly, that he would they they are going to do their live commentary on the show, but only for paid members. It's absolutely fascinating because this shows 
that Breaking Points knows full well it's fair use and they have they have no legal exposure. They're actually going to profit off of what they are doing. So this is actually. If you are claiming something's educational, but then you're making money off it, that's a challenge to fair use. Now, it doesn't apply in this regard. It's a presidential debate. But what this shows is breaking points, fears. And I mean, this all due respect. I'm a, I'm a fan. CNN is going to file a takedown, put a strike on their channel and try and disrupt their business. They know that if they do their show through locals, CNN will be unable to do this. And so they're taking their show behind the paywall for defensive reasons. It's actually kind of crazy. This is what CNN has done. And it's true. If we stream just on YouTube, I would not be surprised. And even X, even though Elon Musk has given insurance assurances, these automated copyright takedown systems, I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube, CNN files, everyone's YouTube goes down. X, Elon says DMC won't apply, but there's an automated system there that may still hit. Rumble, I think, would be the only safe public streaming platform where they're not going to get you. But you put it behind your paywall and see what CNN can't do anything. They can complain. They can send you a letter and you can laugh and throw it in the garbage and say it's fair use. If CNN tried to go after anybody over this, they would probably end up having to pay legal fees for the person they sued, which is why they won't do it, which is why Fox won't do it. So this is this is actually big that what what CNN is pushing independent media into doing. They've gone off the reservation. Well, completely off the reservation. It's desperation. I keep thinking they're going to go back more towards the middle. I mean, they used to be. Look, they've always been left pretty much. But I mean, even in 16, you know, they would put Trump supporters on there and, and give them an opportunity to make the arguments and whatnot. And then I think probably in 18 was when they just it, they changed. And even though they've had a leadership change at the top, it, they just continue to go more to the left and lose credibility. And I don't get it. I remember when I had my daughter 33 years ago, it was during the Gulf War, and I remember being up in the middle of the night watching CNN with, you know, their reporters on the ground over there. And, I mean, they it, they were built in Atlanta. That was Turner Broadcasting Network, and it's, it's really just disappointing. It really, really is disappointing because they have gone so far off the reservation. It's interesting because, I mean, last time it was Fox, right, who, who was having issues with people simulcasting or, or, or streaming right. it to comment on it. Uh, I think so much of it is, is yes, I think mainstream, especially left-leaning media, has gone so far. There's kind of no walking it back without out obviously putting out your own hypocrisy. But the other part is I think independent media has just gotten so big that it is actually a financial threat to all of these places. If you can't keep all of your view, I, I agree like, with you. If, if all of the eyes aren't on CNN, they can't say this was the highest watched debate of all time or whatever they want to say because ultimately you know it's very difficult to for them to say like well we got this many viewers and this uh simulcast that was also watching it got this many viewers and really don't want people watching that other media right. and they, they want you to listen to their commentators and you want their perspective and things like that so it, it's it's partially ideological i agree with you i think some of it is just uh this absolute terror that anyone might present information or, or challenge uh your moderators or whatever it is but i think another part of it is just uh independent media over the last you know definitely over the last uh, two decades, but definitely in the last uh, eight years, has grown so much that yes. it can actually hurt their bottom line. And that's really all they care about at the end of the day. Yeah. And they lose control. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but actually back in 2011, CNN, I went to CNN and we worked with CNN to do the first ever pres um, Tea Party presidential debate. We did it in Tampa and all the candidates were there. Romney, I can't even remember who was there. But they were incredible to work with. And it was one of the most successful debates. Wolf Blitzer was a moderator. It was one of their most successful debates ever. Huge ratings, you know. Then in um, in 2010, when we took back the House and that first State of the Union after we took back the House, we were going to do a response to the State of the Union with um, Michelle, uh, with the Congresswoman from Minnesota, Michelle Bachman. And we were going to do it at the Capitol Hill Club. And then Fox said they weren't going to cover it live. Capitol Hill Club pulled us. And so we went to the National Press Club. CNN was the only one that carried it live that night. Their ratings were off the chart because they covered the, the Tea Party response to the State of the Union. So they used to be there where they were giving coverage. They don't even do that anymore. I right. mean, at all. But another thing I will say, because I d worked with CNN so much, 
the thing is, believe it or not, there are a lot of people behind the scenes running control panels and all this stuff that are conservatives and are with us. But it's their on-air talent and these producers that are way left. I believe that because I think that's true of a lot of yeah. different industries, right? If you want to be – I mean, we talk about this with Hollywood, right? If you want to be in Hollywood, then you either have to say nothing or, or at least parrot right. the party line. But just, you know, if you're if you're like a sound guy, that doesn't necessarily mean you believe in any of this. Right. Um, I, 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 real quick um, – Twitter is lighting up with people claiming that Jamal Bowman has uh, lost his primary. We're tracking that. Mm. He hasn't. Yeah, the the results are not even in. It should so. have closed pretty soon, though, like nine, it I think. Just yeah. closed, and results are just starting to come in. Yeah. But, like, yo, all of these people, I'm seeing a lot of people I know, high-profile people claiming he lost already with no sources, no evidence, and uh, it's not real. Stop posting stuff you didn't fact-check or source, because we're sitting, I'm staring at the results and it's like, okay, let's see, we got our first uh, Bronx County is in with uh, 3% of votes counted. And everyone on Twitter is like, Bowman is out, Bowman is out. And I'm like, uh, where is that? Because <laughs> am I late to the party? No, but we will have that uh, that update when it comes in. Uh, this is big because Bowman, of course, he, he pulled the fire alarm. He committed a crime. He's far left. And apparently he can bench four wheels. Did you see that? They're projecting <laughs> that uh, that South Carolina is going to— that. Uh, Sherry Biggs, the Republican in South Carolina, is going to win. Decision Desk HQ is projecting that. She's be, she's going to be, win against two. She's replacing uh, what? Uh, it says uh, primary runoff for the primary runoff in South Carolina's third congressional district. It doesn't say who she's running. But it's against. primary, so I mean, yeah. is she she's replacing a Republican? Are we? Do we care? I mean, I'm just looking. I was just there. Yeah. Well, it's it's we, we are looking to see if there will be a rebuke in New York of the far left yeah. in Congress. So if Bowman gets primaried and gets booted, which a lot of people predict he will, it's going to be interesting. It needs to happen. And the reason is because this the New York City government is the epicenter of the DSA right now. As far as I know, that is where the DSA has the most influence in politics in the United States. The DSA are communists. They openly endorse Marxist ideas. This is unacceptable in America. This is something that we need to fight against very, like, as as strongly as we can, we need to to use all of the political means at our disposal to prevent communists from taking over. Because you see the problems that are going on in New York with crime and all of that stuff. This is directly because of the policies that communists institute. I also think that's one of the reasons you like everyone should keep an eye on Colorado's primary today. Yes. I know we all talk about Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert a lot, but but there are other races there where Colorado is really this this strange state where it was hugely red in some areas, but areas but has become intensely blue, especially around some of the major cities, like Denver specifically. Uh, and so to see what Colorado puts out as its potential next uh, uh election is interesting like how, what kind of candidates are the republicans fielding there and how left leaning are the democrats in colorado uh, and we'll really only know after the results of the primary tonight and nowadays we're not even talking about left leaning you're talking about pure leftists that's what i if mean you're like, communists they're not it's not even it's not left leaning it's it's literal it's a literal threat to the united states but that's why colorado is interesting right because colorado was re reliably red for a long time yeah. but as as more people have kind of moved out there as the cities have gone more blue uh you know in some states where you're red except for in the major city you get a democrat who kind of postures as a moderate they say you know well i, I like this issue socially but in these ones i, I lean here uh but now it seems like especially with captive cities cities that are in red states but are dominantly blue they just go out of their way to to pick the most aggressive progressive candidate and say you guys will comply to our will we know better than right. you do that's that's my interpretation at least south carolina three is a seat held by jeff duncan that um i think he's retiring and this sherry biggs it looks like they're claiming she's won against pastor mark burns who was endorsed by president trump interesting they're all deleting the tweets now. Come on, guys. Hmm. What do you, you know? Even Libs of TikTok tweeted that Bowman lost. Shout out Libs. You know we love you. But uh, I, I'm I'm like when I saw Libs of TikTok tweeted that Bowman lost, I was like, okay, there's got to be something I'm missing. I'm staring at the results here, and it's not in yet. Thanks for watching this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe, and we'll see you all there.